When you were in school, did you ever remember why, or ever wonder why the teachers made you read all of those different books? And we're never going to use those books, and we're never going to have to know some of these things. Well, when I was thinking of the scripture today, I was thinking of one of those books, Gulliver's Travels. Remember Jonathan Swift's books, Gulliver's Travels, where he goes to different places? It's a classic. And in one of his travels, he went to this one kingdom where there was a fighting kingdom, uh, one dueling with them. There were two kingdoms. And, and do you remember what they were fighting over? They were fighting over which end of the egg, the soft-boiled egg, to open. There was one kingdom that believed that you had to open the big end and eat from the big end, and they were called the Big Endigans, strangely enough. And there was the kingdom, the rival kingdom that they were fighting with, and they believed that you had to open the little end, and they were called the Little Endigans. And so they fought over this. This was a struggle. Now, Swift had a satire on the, the operation of society at his time, the church of his time. And here were people quarreling over small things. Wow, that doesn't just happen in books, it happens in life. Jesus lived at a time when the Jews hated the Samaritans, and the Samaritans hated the Jews. And they all believed in the same God, but what divided them and why they hated each other was the Samaritans believed that God lived on their mountain, Mount Ebal, and the Jews believed that God lived on their mountain, Mount Zion. And so they fought over that. Now how, how much different is that between the little Endigans and the big Endigans where God lives? Now, I mean, and you know what? We do this all the time. Paul, writing to the Romans, is, is telling them of his belief. And there was a controversy in his day over eating meat. Now, in the pagan cities, all of the meat was offered to their gods, their pagan gods. And then it was sold because the pagan gods didn't eat it, of course. Now, the Jewish people would not eat that meat. It was against their belief. It was against the, what they believed. And so the Christians in the Gentile cities that would eat that meat because they didn't have any compulsion against that were not acceptable to the Jewish Christians because of abstaining or not abstaining, eating or not eating. And then there was another controversy. Which day is the Sabbath? Well, of course, the strict Jewish interpretation was that the Sabbath is, is from sundown on Friday night to sundown on Saturday. And for the, the Christians in the pagan uh, times, the pagan cities, it was Sunday in, in honor of the resurrection of Jesus. And so they had these controversies going on. And Paul is saying, it's no big deal. It's not important. Don't judge one another. You come before God, and before God, God will judge all things. That's the person to whom we are responsible. These controversies are, are not new. We have them today. We have, I don't know how many hundreds of different denominations because we all read it differently and we all think everybody else is wrong. And we think we're the ones that are right. Paul is trying to give some advice to us, saying concentrate on the things that are more important and let go of the things that are less important. Now, this is good advice. Jesus gives the same advice. In the scripture there from Matthew, Peter comes to Jesus and said, how many times must I forgive? Is seven times enough? Now, seven times was a lot. And, and Jesus said, no, 70 times seven, or 77, or infinity. These were big numbers in that time. And so forgiveness and not judgment seem to be a part of what God is trying to say to us. And I think that's a message that our world needs to hear. I think that too often we hear about the judgment and we're concerned about that and, and we're, we're interested in promoting that and, and getting people to be focused in that direction because we believe that somehow that's going to improve their behavior. But I don't think, think it works that way. And God doesn't because God's message to us is very different. There are many times when we are judging ourselves and, and this judgment hurts us. 
I had a, an interesting episode last Monday. My little granddaughter, my eight-year-old granddaughter, stayed overnight with us on Sunday night, and we had a picnic on, on Monday. And so on Monday morning, we did a lot of work in preparation for the picnic, and then when all that was done, my, my little granddaughter said, let's go down and feed the duckies. And we went down to Little Springs Park. I don't know if you know Little Springs Park, but there are lots of ducks there. And we took some food along, and, and she loved feeding the duckies. And then I told her, I said, you know what? If you put some food in your hand, they'll come up, up and eat it from your hand. And she was a little skeptical, but she tried it. And she loved it, because the, the ducks would do that. And they followed her around, and she loved it. And then after the food was gone, she said, well, let's, let's play in the playground. And so she ran over to the playground, and she slipped, because it was wet and soggy, and she fell in the mud. So she got up and brushed herself off, and then she played on some of the other equipment there, and then it was time to go back. We got her back and cleaned up before Mother came, and we're sitting there in the afternoon, and I said to her, I said, tell your mother what you did this morning. And she hung her head. I said, go ahead and tell her. And she said, I fell in the mud. <laughs> I mean, why not tell her about the ducks? Okay, and I said, well, tell her about the ducks, Sarah, tell her about the ducks. And then, then she perked up a little bit. But there are many times we have this attitude of looking what we've done wrong. And somehow that has a way of overshadowing the other part of our lives. Now, in this episode, it was very minor, but you know, for, for many people, seeing what we do wrong is, is overwhelming. And, and we focus in on that. And, and the words of Jesus... And the words of Paul are, don't judge, let it go. Everybody makes mistakes, everybody has problems or, or things that happen. Now fortunately in our world today, parents that teach their kids what they're doing wrong is a good thing because not a lot of parents do that. But sometimes it gets overdone and it gets, it's too much and, and we have to be careful that we feel about the good things and we feel good. There's a whole other area of society that, that has this happening too, where, where people feel bad about themselves. I, I believe that there is an epidemic of sexual abuse in our world. You just have to read the papers and, and know all of that that's going on, and it's just epidemic. And, and the victim of sexual abuse believes that it's their fault, that they're the ones that caused it. They believe that they have done something wrong. And it's not, not true. It is not true. We should not look at ourselves with judgment we need to look at ourselves with eyes of understanding and acceptance. And we need somehow to go beyond the judgment. Now judgment is just so much a part of our world. And we need to be realistic about it. We need to be understanding about it. And we need to follow the words of Jesus in regard to it. There was one time when I was serving a church many years ago and there was a woman who, who asked me, she said, there's a program going on in my women's circle. Can I stand up and make an announcement about it in church? And I said, yeah. And so she came up at the appropriate time and she began her announcement. But then she, she drifted into some personal observations. And one of the things that she was saying was, you ladies that come to church and wear slacks are wrong. You're bad. She said, you should come to church in a dress or a skirt and blouse. Now, I've got to tell you, there was a, it was a setup somewhat like this. And I was sitting in the middle chair, and she was standing in front of me saying this. And she was wearing a mini skirt. <laughs> and I don't want to be judgmental. But she probably wasn't the person that should be wearing a miniskirt. She should have evaluated that. It was, it was a sight to behold. <laughs> there are a lot of times when our criticism is focused outward. And we need to evaluate our own behavior. But judgment shouldn't be a part of it. We shouldn't be judging other people. We shouldn't be saying, you're wrong because this is my belief, and if you don't believe my way, there's something wrong with you. We need to somehow integrate that, to put it together, to, to understand how we should deal with one another and how we should be loving and caring and supportive. 
And, and I think that this is what Paul was telling the Christians in Rome. I think that's what he's telling us today. I think it's the same message that Jesus gave on so many different occasions to not judge and, and to be forgiving and loving. If we could know and do this and understand this, what a difference that would make. In the years that I have been in the church and been a minister in the church, I have seen many occasions where this group judges this group and, and the judgment is intense and powerful and, and it's wrong. It's, it's not where God wants us to be. I remember integration. Remember that in the 60s? White churches and black churches. I can remember the, the ushers of one white church standing arm in arm to prevent blacks from entering their service. That was wrong. And it's changed. Now, not everywhere, but it's changed basically. And scripture was quoted on both sides that this is right and this is right because it says in the Bible, and I read it, that's right. Not too long after that, there was this push to include women in the church. Oh my goodness, women in the church. I swear to you, I've served churches that would not permit women to sit on the boards, either the elders or the trustees. Now I got to tell you, I changed that in some of the churches because it's wrong. And women were prevented from being ministers. And it was based on scripture where women should not speak in church. You know what? We need to have a better understanding of what God wants of us and not an attitude of judgment, but an attitude of understanding and openness. Not long after that, there was the controversy over divorced people. Divorced people were not acceptable in most churches. And I knew other ministers who, who didn't want divorced people taking up the offering or singing in choir. And it's not too many years ago. Both quoting scripture on both sides, saying this is the way it should be, and judging each other. And we need to go beyond judgment. And now we have a controversy over the inclusion of homosexuals. And, and people are really excited and, 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 and adamant about that. This is the way it should be. This is the way it should be. You know what? We need to understand the words of Jesus. And we need to understand the words of Paul speaking for God. And that is that we should be loving and caring toward one another. Toward ourselves and toward other people. To build people up. And not to tear people down. Our job as Christians, our responsibility, our sacred duty is to be loving and caring to all of God's children. Not judgmental, but open and understanding. God has done this to all of us and for all of us. There is none of us who are perfect. We are all people, children of God. And we need to be respectful of people. We need to do this in so many ways. Uh, here, here on the anniversary of 9-11, of fanatical religious people perpetrated this. And you know what? There were times when there were Christian fanatical people perpetrating similar things. We need to go beyond this to a point of understanding, a point of knowing and accepting people as children of God as we have been accepted. To know the loving side of God. And to know that judgment is not our responsibility. Our, our responsibility is loving as Jesus has loved us. And so the words of Paul, do not judge one another. It doesn't matter whether you eat meat that's offered to idols or not. It doesn't matter if you worship God on Friday night or Sunday morning or Saturday night, or Wednesday evening, or whenever. What matters is, are we following God's will? Are we doing what God wants us to do? Are we loving as he has loved us? The judge is not ourselves. Not to judge ourselves, and not to judge others. We need to evaluate life to find out what is good, and what builds people and what loving is or means.